Guten Tag, Teile zu Mimim. Let's try to continue with the halachas of Hagolah scale of Helig base. We'll continue with a few more klolem before we go to practical. Uh, we went through many klolem of Perishin, Klisheni, and uh, Libun, Hagolah, Rechulah. Um, machvas. There's a halacha of Machvas which is a frying pan. A frying pan, an interesting halacha, that it's a machlikis apaskin, whether the way the Alter Rebbe explains it, the way some place can hold, that because it doesn't have a lot of water, it just has a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, so therefore the oil could dry up, and therefore it becomes ayudeya ish, not ayudeya mayim. So therefore, a frying pan, according to this shita, would need to have libun gomer. Mashenka, <clears throat> the other shita holds no. Every pot, even that you cook with water, sometimes the water could dry up. Nevertheless, there's always enough moisture left in there somehow. It should be considered bishul, not tzli. According to this opinion, a machvas, because it starts off with also more shemen, then even though it's not regular water, it's still considered bishu. These are two shittas machlekes of the shayna. In uh, Giridea, in Simekuf Chafalov, over there we pass in that Lagab Shari Surin, the Allah is, one needs to do libun on a machlus. However, by Hilches Pesach, is the Allah that it's enough to do only Hagol. And this theater between why over here we pass in by Pesach, we're Pascha more Lekula, and by Shari Surim, we're more Mahmed. So the Beis Yesef, the Bach, and so does the Al Rebbe, except La Allah and Simit of Aleph, is because, as we mentioned yesterday in the Shir, there's a concept of a Tater Bala, that Heter, which went in through fire, like Basar, just flesh, kosher of flesh, could be kashert through Hagola, even though it went in through Esh. Because it's called the Tater Bala. And by Chomets, even though there are those shittas who say Chomets is not called the Tater Bala, even before Pesach, because that thing by itself is turning into Isser later on when Pesach comes. It's Shmoy Olaf. It's called the same Chomets before Pesach as it's called in Pesach. It just happens to be before Pesach, it's Hetet. And Pesach, it turns into Isser. But it's the same Shmoy as opposed to Basar. In order to become Asar, has to become Basar Bechalov. It's a new Matthias. Therefore, that is ma- much more Kal. <clears throat> but Lagaba Pesach is a Machlekes. We Paskin, it's not called the Tater Bala. However, it's a Machlekes a Paskin. So we kind of have like a Svek Svekil and a Tater. It's a Machlekes a Paskin where the Chomets Bechalal ever needs Libra. Because according to the shit uh, that it's a Tater Bala, it never needs Libra. Hagol is always enough. The im tim tzeloi mer. You're gonna to want to say as vos that we pass in chometz is not a teira bala, like we take a pass in the poyer like that when it's not hefsud meruba. As afa pikein is there. There are those who are matir that bchalal every machvas is called bishul is not called ayadei oish. The bemeila you could be matir. The im tim tzeloi mer we pass in like the other shit that says no a machvas. It's called al yidei eish. It's not called directly. It's not called al yidei mine. So that so we have the other shit. But there's still a shit who says it's a teirah bala by chometz, and therefore you don't need bchalal liban. You always could do agal. So because we're combining the two shittas, that's why the alter rebbe, the mishyesev, and others say that by chometz, if the shaila is only a chometz because shaila will make all that uh, a frying pan could do. Could have regular hagala. However, Bashari Surim, you need Libun Gomer. So if one goes to Kasha in Ukraine or in Russia, of course, always over here, you need always to apply both Chumras. All the Chumras to, that apply to Chumras and all the Chumras that apply to Shari Surim over Chumras, because over there you're going to deal with both his Surim. But if you only have a Shaila of a Chumras, like a frying pan, once wants to Kasha for Pesach, so the Allah is. That one could rely on Hagola, not Liban. Um, however, the Al Rebbe says that's only when you have 
a certain amount of regular oil in there. But if you start shmir oil, a little bit of oil, like they take, they take the spray, a drop of it in the mashu, that it shouldn't stick to it, says the Alter Rebbe, that's not part of the machlekes. That's absolutely al deyesh. And the male of that there's no, there's no water there. That that type of a of a frying pan for sure, even for Pesach, according to the Alter Rebbe, needs to have real libun. It's interesting that the Shach in Yeridea Chelik Beis does bring down a Chuvus Menachem Mazadi from the Mame Pana. He brings down that he's Machalik in a different way. He's Machalik that a Goyish Keli, usually the agent that it's used, is also Iser. They use Chelif or their Shuman is Nevelis Atrefus. So therefore, that's how Kivege learns Pshat in that Chuvus Menachem Mazadi. So according to this, it comes out the way Menachem Azari is saying like this, that by Chomets, usually the shaman that you use there is an agent, which is Heter. It's not Chomets. The Chomets is only the crumbs that are, you, you're, you're, being, you're frying. But the agent that you're using is like water. The shaman is kosher. As opposed to by a Goyesh Shekeli, the shaman that you're using, that you want to say that's the agent, that's like the water, the shaman itself, is, is Nevelis, it's Chelev, or, or Shuman from, a, from Nevelis and Trefus, and therefore, you're using it without an agent. So, Zoktrib Kiveger, according to this, Shita Kumte Zerat of Santa Loch, that what? That if somebody will cook Yai Nesach, Lamashal, would need Libun, not Hagola, even though it's full of water, it's not, it's not only the age, it's a regular Bishl, Emerson Bishl, but there is no agent. The word al yidei ma'im the pshad that the iser went in through a medium of of water. Called dover asher lo yavo beish taviru b'moy means it went through an agent of water first. But over here the iser is the ayin nesach, yeah, or chalavakim. The chalavakim is the iser itself. So according to this Reb Kivayger with Toiskum and Achayda, that even kashering milk for two twelve is not going to help you. Need libun. Akapana most achrein machayli can this famous chuva. Of some sefer, the Pischetshuva brings it down there. We're not going to get into whole ariches. He says no, that even the Ayanesach and all the other things, uh, if it's not shuman things that burn or she, you know shaman, regular, even if the iser itself is being cooked, if it's a regular cooking, um, it's enough to kasher with tagola. You don't need libun. There is another halacha which we didn't talk about it. Um, and we said things that become also through clarition, through uh, through heat. There's a lot of kavush. Anything which became soaked in a liquid for 24 hours becomes also. So if you had a becher that you used it for wine all year round, it was kosher pesach wine, but you dip your challah in there sometimes, and some crumbs are left in the in the becher for 24 hours, so you didn't wash it out till Matsoy Shabbos. This becher became chametzik. He needs regular hagola to kasher from kavish. The Alter Rebbe says there's such a thing called if you can't do hagola, it's called milui viirui, that you fill it up fully with cold water, you let it stand for 24 hours, you pour out the water, and you pour in another set of water full to the top for 24 hours, and again you pour out the water and you do it with a third amount of water for the third time. That's called milu vi'irui. That only helps for something which went in through kavush. Kavush means soaked in it. Isre went in through kavush. One could do milu vi'irui and kasher in such a way. And the Alter Rebbe says, the Chiddush is that this works even for cheres. Even though for cheres nothing works, in most cases not even liban as we mentioned already in the previous year. However, for cover something that went in betzainan, milu iru would work even for cheres. Now, by cover there's another halacha that something that is uh, has a certain sharpness to it, like melach or chaymetz chazak. It's a lashon of Avram. Chaymetz chazak also ha- has a din of sharpness and therefore the halacha is that these things or tzir these things could become kavish 
kishir kedei shiyala lo eish ve'yaftiach. But some say it's 18 minutes, or other it's a short, it's short, much shorter time, like it takes to heat up a pot of water. And then if you soaked an iser in some chaymetz chazak, then the halacha is, you don't have to wait 24 hours, the iser should absorb in the keli. Even in a short while, 15, 20 minutes, it could be absorbed into this keli. However, it's very interesting, if you read the Alter Rebbe and Tafnan Alav, and it discusses about Yain Saraf, the halachas of Yain Sarev has many details. Yain Sarev has also a smell. Our meaning is that we don't catch a keli of Yain Sarev that had mashk in it because the smell remains. Also, Yain Sarev is not pogam after 24 hours. It, it, it doesn't become a binyayma because it has a strong taste and a good taste, mashbiach, even after 24 hours. However, Yal Terebe, it's mashm over there that it doesn't have a din of chizik. That it that it that that it's chaymet chazik that it goes in less than twenty four hours. It's mash with the lotion over there that he, he soaked it for twenty four hours. As well, kaponam of gedeng tzachmir the lotion from Al Reb that it's mash that yain sort of doesn't have a din of chizik of chaymet chazik. Interesting why not? But as well is mash. But al kaponam so there are many kalim that even though you never used it for hot chametz. And you never put it into a dishwasher, washing with the other chamas de kikelim. You never washed it out while there was crumbs in it with hot water. Nevertheless, the very fact that it was able to be soaked in it, that by itself uh, would need hagol. Um, we might have a lot of things that we still missed, but I'm going to start now to go over to the practical halachas of, of uh, kashrik, and perhaps some more klolam will come about in the middle of doing this. Now, the Allah is an order kashering. Kashering does one thing. It takes out beliefs. Beliefs means absorptions. Kashering does not take care of any be'ain. Any maimoshes that it's left has to be washed off thoroughly before you kasher. Sai, it will make it worse if it's there because now other beliefs will go in. The kailas and ain't the is not going to help you because ain't the is only for the bliyas in there become pogam after 24 hours. Physical chametz, which is there, might have a good taste after five days as well. So, Abdel Rabbi, you're going to kasher, and you didn't wash it out thoroughly, you just now made the keli treif. You just now made through the heat the isa going into the keli. So, of course, the keli has to be thoroughly washed off. If it's an oven and has a lot of schmutz, it has to be easy off and to take off with all the... the all the schmutz has to come off before we kasher. And then, kashering can happen. Um, when you do lib and gomer, so sometimes lib and gomer, the reality is that lib and gomer could burn away every physical thing as well. But it's not so posh. Sometimes an oven could have tons and tons of oil, commercial ovens, that you could see. Sometimes the oil catches fire and it could burn for a day from all the oil that's in there. So to assume just because somebody made a, a good libun, that everything is burned away, even though Shechan Orech is mashma, that if you have a crack and you can't clean it out, you should put, you should put Gecholem on that crack before you kasher it, and that will burn away everything that's in there. It's a bit of common sense. Yeah, if it's a mashu, some clinicate over there will be burned away. If there's tons of schmutz there, it has to be washed out. It's not going to be burned away so easily. So, so the first thing is when we go to kasher anything, is we need to wash it out. Now, if we wash it out, if it's iser, now the, if we wash it out with hot water, now the iser just went right back in. So now we have to wait the 24 hours from now, as we mentioned yesterday in Shira, kashering always goes with waiting 24 hours to make it first pogum. So you'll have to wash it out thoroughly and then wait 24 hours. For states, when you wash it out, it should be in a place where it's not going to make anything else today, from a toilet sink or something like that. And then you uh, you wait 24 hours, and then you cash it. Rust is something that blocks the hot water from directly going in there. Rust will not let the cashing go through. But it says clearly in Shechan it's only if it has a mamosh as the rust. If it's only discoloration, it's a rusty color, that's not a problem. One could cash it even if it has a rusty color. That doesn't block anything. Talking about blocking, the Al-Tareba makes it very clear in Simatofnan base 
and, and I mention it because I saw people make on it. When it comes to traveling, we know that people could take a sifcha, they take a certain basket or a shmata and put many spoons in it and dip it into the mikra. And the Alter Rebbe says, over there it's kosher because the water is not a chatzitza. It's light. And the water goes through the holes and then the, the kalim are traveled in the water while it's in the basket, even though it touches the basket. Touching the basket doesn't make it a chatzitza enough that the water doesn't get in there. Moisture goes in there, it's mechubert to the mikveh, and that is kosher enough to be called a tvila. However, when it comes to kashering, you need to boil out. You have to, it's even worse than asering. Asering is enough that a went in, becomes asering. To kasher, it's not enough that a drop came out. Everything has to come out. If it just became hot for a split second that something came out, it's good enough to acid the water. It's not good enough to cash the keli. And therefore, says the Alter Rebbe, if two spoons touch each other, over there in between where they touch each other, the water, the heat doesn't really penetrate enough to take bleas out of that spot. If a maid says the Alter Rebbe, you have to put each spoon separately. If you want to put it on a sifcha, on a shmata, you have to put them out one by one and lower it into the hot pot like that which makes it much harder. So you can't just take a whole basket, throw in 20 spoons, and dip it in into the big yaira that has boiling water. It's not going to work. The Alter Rebbe says clearly also, when you hold something with a tzavas, with a plier, because it's too hot, then you have to move it. You have to open the plier for a second and move it to the next drop, or you're holding on that keli, to another spot. So the original spot should not get burned out. The halacha is that kashering is not like tvila. It doesn't have to be kuloi b'mayim at one time. As if you tvila, you can't tevil a half a goof and then another half a goof. It has to be kuloi b'mayim at the same time. However, kashering does not have to be like that. So you could kasher a half a keli first and hold the other keli with your hand, and then the other side, and then turn it around and hold the other side with your hand and kasher the other side because kashering is not tvila has to be burned out. So that's how, so when it comes to kashering, anything that we need to put in a pot is very simple. You take a pot, the pot could be milchik or fleshik. The pot could be, uh, make sure better the pot shouldn't be used 24 hours. The pot was not used 24 hours. And then you take the kaolin that need to be kashered, which were not, used for 24 hours as well. So any blia which will come out will be already with the Ebed, Mesa, and Tam of Gam. It won't acid anything. And now if it's going to go back in, it's going to be also not vanat, as mentioned by Riches in yesterday's shir. And you'll dip it in there, and you take it out, and you cool it off. The reason you cool it off is because you don't want to be Nehana. You want to show that you're not Nehana. Because the Ketchili, we're not allowed to cook in a pot chain of Binyamin. When, in less than time of Gam. We want to show we're not planning to be in a Hannah from this water. We want this water shouldn't be absorbed. We want it to go off. So we look at Chilo, we try to wash it off. Of course, we're not Malachim. It will go back a drop before we wash it off. It's not a problem because it's less than time of Gam and not Banat. But look at Chilo, we wash it off. So again, you have a big Kaili, which is not used for 24 hours. And the Kalim that you catch it are not used for 24 hours. Everything is clean. And you throw in Kaylee by Kaylee into this pot, and then you cool it off with cold water. That's how you kasher things which could go into a pot. Now comes other inyana which cannot go into a pot a countertop, a tabletop. So let's discuss how first these things became awesome. Now, if you take a hot kugel, and the hot kugel is called a gush. And even though it came out of the pot, you took it out with a with a fork from from a pot, a piece of kishke from the chal, which is real chametz. Took it out with a fork. So according to many poskim, it's maybe not considered a clinician anymore because it's outside of the, of the original pot. According to many many poskim, Al Tareb is chayshish for this and Mishnah Gimel um, that it's still it's called a gush, and therefore. It, it's not a liquid, and therefore it retains its heat because it doesn't need walls to hold it. It, 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 it stands in, independently, and therefore it doesn't become a cliché yet. And when you put it down, it has a din clearish. Even when you put it down, 
into the klisheni, it doesn't become a klisheni because it, 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 it does, it's not like water that the walls hold it. And therefore, Tfana Yisnetzana is the second keli, the cold walls cool it off. Over here, cold walls don't cool it off because it's standing on its own. It only touches one surface at the bottom. And therefore, if you put a cold kugel, according to many poiskim, you have a clinician over here. And therefore, this as is not only like the machlekes that we had of iru clinician, iru clinician also, according to most poiskim, mentioned yesterday, bariches, ases kedei klipa. This will also aser kedei klipa. Even though, according to many poiskim, this is a clinician mamish. However, it could only aser kedei klipa because of a new rule. The klalis titoye gavr. When you have two surfaces meet, a top one and a bottom one, the top one and the bottom one, the bottom one is always going to be the one that is goyver. If the bottom one is hot, it's as if the whole thing was hot. Everything becomes asif. If the bottom one is cold, then the bottom one will cool off the top one to a certain extent, negate to many alochas, but at least negate to this instant, legaba, this connection, it will be considered as if it's cold because the bottom one is cold. However, for one second, till it cooled off, it was able to be belaya. It's ademekele, till it cools off, belaya is belaya, and that's why the asr is only kedei clip. So if one takes a hot pot, which a hot pot, you took off the fire, lechol adeyes, it's a clearition. Better than a gush. It's worse than a gush. It's the clearition itself with the hot walls. The tfanois hamchamamois, that just came off the fire. And there's some crumbs at the bottom of the pot, shmutz of chametz, and you put it down on the counter, on a countertop. L'chala deyes shibu'el, and you have over here now a clearition, mamish. And these, these crumbs are a clearition. They're coming from the fire, and they're connected to tfanis mechamamis. However, when you put them down on the countertop, because the countertop is cold, the pot remains a clearition. If anybody put it, something in there, as a din clearition. But lagaba de yachas, between the pot and the countertop, we say titoy gavir. And it will only allow the countertop to become oser kidei klipa. So 90% of the times, a countertop doesn't become oser more than kidei klipa anyway. But it could become oser mamish menateri, because it's a clearition mamish. A hat kugel or a hat pot. Hat lakshin falls sometimes. So it could become real osir, but it's only osir kede klipa. If one would have a machine that's able to take off one shicht, one slice, one thin, thin slice like a sheet of paper, they will take off. Ikara dinner would be kosher. However, we can't do that. So that's why we need to kosher it. So how do we kosher? So 90% of the times the way things become osir at a table is usually from an iru. Things from a clerician spilled on it. And therefore, iru clerician should have worked. Kabaloi, kachpolte, as we mentioned yesterday. So you take hot water, you boil up in a tea kettle hot water, and you pour hot water on the tabletop. You pour hot water on the countertop. That should work. But, but if I put a hot pot on it, which had chomets underneath, um, now, Iru clarition, as we mentioned, is a but the Iru is really like a clarition once it comes out of the clarition. The pot that I put down or the hot kugel might be clarition to many other poiskim. So Iru won't kasher it, according to many shittas. According to the shittas, that Iru is not like a clarition. So here, there will be a chumra. We, we were always machmer that it's a clarition, but over here, it's, it's going to come out of kula. Who, according to the Shoshanim, they say Iru is not a clarition, and this countertop became also directly from a path, you need to do better than that. And because of this, is the, there is the concept of uh, Evan Meluban. Evan Meluban means you take a stone, you heat it up on fire, until it becomes burning, burning hot. So this by itself becomes like a piece of fire. And anytime you're going to pour water onto this, stone, you're going to hear the sizzling. You're going to see the water starts reboiling. So it's as if you put it back into a clinician. So the answer for this is as you hold in one hand, today you could buy in the hardware stores there's a long handle with a cage and the cage has a place where you put a stone in there. 
and you put that on the fire. The handle is like a foot long. You could pick and you and the, the you put it on the gas range, and the cage with the stone boils, heats up, extremely hot. You could take a towel or a glove, be very very careful, and hold the handle from a foot away. And with your left hand, you go you hold it a half an inch away to the table, quarter of an inch, something like that. And with your right hand, you pour hot water coming out of the tea kettle, which was just boiling, 212. And even though it's only an iru clearition, and there's a machlik is whether it's clearition, but through the Evan Malubin that you are now pouring on an Evan Malubin, it re-sizzles, it reboils, and you go step by step by step by step all over the table, and that makes it as if a clearition itself did it. This is what's used also for many other kalim that you cannot put into clearition. You can't cook up water in there. So the eighth of the Evan Malubin is there to make an iru clearition back into a clearition. And that's what this Evan Malubin is, is for. Now, the Alter Rebbe says it's a machlekes apaskim, whether the Evan Malubin really works, whether Taka makes it into a clarition or not. Um, therefore, the Alter Rebbe says like this, but the Evan, if you did it, even if you took, filled up a sink, let's say a sink, you fill up a sink with hot water, even tap water, and then you take this cage that holds the stone, or you could do it even with a hammer. Some people put a hammer, I don't know, if the note shouldn't crack the, the wood or, or the, the, the metal, a hammer that has a rubber handle, you put the hammer part on the fire, it's metal, it's going to be boiling, boiling hot, and then you hold it by the rubber handle, and you go into the sink, and you go around the bottom, and then around the walls, and you could see the water literally starts bubbling all over, whatever, an inch around, an inch or two inches around where you hold that, that hammer, that will start bubbling all over. Now, the Rebbe says, but the Abbot, if you did it that way, it's also okay, because the Metziah as well, that it bubbled. Maila Babuis, through a heat of fire, which originally came from fire. But the Rebbe says, better is to do it, no, that you hold it with one hand, and you pour directly iru clearition on it while you move it around. Not that the water is there already, a klisheni, and you reboil it through the stone, because you try to make it the closest possible to a clearition. So iru clearition is the closest to a clearition. It's still not clarition. So the stone turns it back to a clarition. However, if you fill up the sink with water, even if you fill it up from a chiney, from a tea kettle, it's still going to be now a cliche only. So rather, you should make from an idu clarition back into a clarition through the stone. So that's... So if you want to capture the surface um, that is really chametzik, and you really need to do a good cashering of, for it, of Allah, and you need a stone. So, for example, somebody has a stainless steel sink, which is real common stick. You take hot pots right off the fire. They could have luxion underneath. You could do other stuff underneath. And you put down into the sink, you know. So, besides when you cool off the luxion, whatever, it pours over, which is eerie. Clarition, but you'd have many times a goosh, but many times it gets in the sink is for sure. Hamas, a question about it, yeah. Now, even though we put an insert into a sink, it's not so posh. If people use hot water on Pesach, that hot water comes back up, it's a shile of clarition, clicheni, and it makes a connection between hot water and the sink. It's not, as we mentioned yesterday, aim beli, oilech, mikeli, el keli, beloy, reitef. Other covered surfaces have no connection to food. A sink will intermingle with hot water, with other things. So a sink needs to be cashered very well. So a sink needs to be cashered with a stone. If it's stainless steel. If it's not stainless steel, we'll talk later how whether you could cash it. But a stainless steel sink could be cashered for Api Allah. Nor was then. The Shaila is, Iru Clearition is Lav Dafke cashering all the things which you had a clearition mamish on it. And therefore, the best thing is you need to take a stone. A lot of people, you know what you're doing, you don't want to ruin it, but you could take a torch and you could actually go around with a torch. As we mentioned yesterday, Libun Kal is the same din as the Hagala. If you have a sink, um, depends on the gauge how thick it is, but if you hold it three, four, five seconds, not even, it becomes boiling, boiling hot the other side as well. And you'll sometimes even you hear a crack, even it changes the shape a little bit because one side becomes hotter. Usually not not nishgefelach. So you go in order. You start at one spot, and you point the flame down. For example, 
So the spot where you're holding count till three, then you go to the next stop spot. That's already three quarters hot from the fire which was shooting at the next spot. Count till three, then go to the next spot. As opposed to if you'll run from one spot to the other, get nervous, you need patience. You know, and then you're not going to get, it'll take too much. If you go in order, so you know I'm starting at one point, the next point is almost there. The next point is almost there, almost there. So I'll just have to go slowly from one spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot. So that's how you could cash it a sink, which is 100% okay. It's Libun Kal, and it's 100% Agola. A sink doesn't make Libun. It means Agola, and that works. When it comes to the faucet, at the, um, I mean, at, at the bottom, at the, at the, where the water runs off, there, sometimes there's glue, underneath could be a plastic pipe therefore you have to be careful don't shoot a fire in there you'll burn it and also anytime there's a dilma paka that you're scared that you're not going to do the right job then the kashirin doesn't help all around the sink is no problem when you get to the faucet and to the handles don't use fire i saw many handles many faucets look exactly metallic they're not they're painted silver they're plastic i had it practically doing i was doing it all of a sudden it melted away under under my hands. Yeah, so I have to be very careful. Over there, if one can, if you know for sure the faucet, the whole faucet is 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 metal, you know for sure. So first of all, the strainers always have to be changed. Take out the strainers full of hummus, full of schmutz. Take it away for a dollar ninety-five, you buy a new strainer. Or use the schmatas that they use on paste. They use the strainer. Take it off, and then if it's hundred percent metal, double check that. You know, the, not just on the color. Double check if it's metal, and you could use the torch, most of the spout that comes out, which also becomes hummus. Sometimes you put a pot, a pot of luxion to cool it off before you open the hot water, the, you know, the cold water, whatever. You get the, all the vapor and all the heat, you know, coming up. And that's even, that's the toy governed. The bottom one is hot. It's even worse than the sink, the spout itself. So that needs a real cashering. If not, you could do it with stone. And then the rest, you could be makel over there. The, the rest, between the two faucets over there, wash out thoroughly, clean with a good agent, and then just pour hot water over as an iru clinician. Over there, probably we never had more than an iru pra, shaila. Pour with the iru clinician. And we, the minute is to cover it, put silver foil, other things to cover because things we touch all year round, we cover just as the, as the minute is. That's the concept of a sink. A tabletop should be the same concept, Lechayda, and a countertop. However, what we mentioned before, over there you won't have water. You have it dry, and we all cover it. Either we put um, plastic, silver foil, people put other cardboards, other types of materials. You have these plastic boards that we put out on the table. And therefore, and then we have also on Pesach, we have a tishtach on it, a tablecloth. So you're always going to have Ein Bli Oelech Mikeli, El Keli, El Keli, Beloit Eitav, it will be three Kelem. So but the Avet, you won't have a Shaila. People still have the Minik, they pour it off just with hot water. For states, it's not a dining room table, you're going to ruin it. Also on a dining room table, usually never hot chametz comes. Nobody eats on a dining room table without covering. And so these fancy tables, nobody eats without covering, so it never became chametz through hot chametz. So just wash it off thoroughly and cover it with, with the one or two, with the tablecloth with the extra covering of silver foil or any other thing else, and plus a tablecloth, you are fine. But um, but a di- dinette table that we eat all, all year long, and people eat directly on the table. Some use that for milk or for fleshik, and they have a tish for the other type. So that becomes real chamezdik. However, just pouring off hot water will be sufficient, because even though it's not 100% you didn't do the stone, but we're going to cover it anyway. So make sure you dry it. You sure there shouldn't be no water in between. You dry it and you cover it, and then it's that's fine. And so too with the countertops today. We wash it off thoroughly, make sure there's no hummus there, wash it off thoroughly, and we pour it over with hot water, because that's our minigus, and we uh with the iru clinician, and then we cover it well, and by covering it well, there's gonna be no connection to the food. However, we still cash it because in Khazri Shalom, in case a kit pulled it off. It could be something touched. A whole pot of soup by mistake went on it. Nice and tamal of gum all year long would be a machayas after 24 hours. But the abbot, everything is kosher. On Pesach, but the abbot, everything is not kosher. 
based on Talmud of Gam is not kosher with the Eved. So therefore, we want it covered as well. But with the Eved, now once it's kosher with the Iru, so then you'll ask a Shaila Rav will be much easier, even if it's uncovered for a second sometimes. As something happened, you'll ask a Shaila Rav. You can find many more Tatum if you do it that way. When we pour hot water on any surface to kosher, we don't, we don't give a spritz and it goes all over the table. Because Iru Shaloi Nifsek HaKiluach is not the same as Iru Shaloi Nifsek HaKiluach, as we mentioned. Iru Shaloi Nifsek HaKiluach is not Mavashal anymore. It doesn't have the Koyach of Eklerishal, Choladeis. It still has Aser things, but it doesn't Kasher. Iru Shaloi Nifsek HaKiluach, which is still connected to the Eklerishal, that's what does the Kashering. And really, you have to go slowly on every spot. You go slowly in every spot. We're not malachim. It's not shy to say that this pour didn't cover three inches around. So we go slow, 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 slow all over. And we try, uh, you know, to go every spot. Also, the table has to be washed off thoroughly before. We make sure that it's dried before we do the kashering. Because otherwise, to tell you, especially with water, that the says in the Shabbos, in the that water mixes. It's even worse than a stamp to a governor to a certain extent over here. That water will mix and cool off uh, the whole the whole water even better than stamp to a governor. It will mix with the hot water and cool off the hot water. So you don't even have bakhlal kashering. So it has to be dried off fully. And so too, if somebody is kashering a table and a phone call came in and he had to stop, and these waters that you put on the table, it's a quarter of an inch water. That's it. Uh, uh, 30 seconds later, this water is not hot. Absolutely not hot. It's warm, not hot anymore. Not yet, so this even. You know? So you pour water, you stopped in the middle, and then you continue, and that water ran over the rest of the table. You have a cold table over here with cold water, which lava dafka that your water is touching the table. It's touching cold water, which is getting cooled off. So make sure you do the whole table at one time. Don't procrastinate. If you want to do half a table at a time and then wash, wipe it off. And, and then do the other half and, and wipe it off. And then again, as we mentioned before, the minigis, we cool off everything after we cash it with, with water because we don't want the water to reabsorb. And uh, we, we pour cold water uh, to wipe off the table. Have enough towels or shmatas around, especially if you live, live above another fellow and you don't want your water to go to a shachan's house. It's not an Indian chazu shalom to be mazik somebody while we're doing our mitzvahs. So make sure you have enough towels around the table. And take a geese, and, you know, pour it with, uh, it should be, make sure that it, every spot is covered. But after the geese and the developer, that it should run on the floor, tons of water. Try to be very careful. The same thing when you spritz it off with, with cold water, take a cup of cold water and slowly spritz all around to cool off the water and then wipe it off thoroughly. And when it's fully, fully dry, that's when you cover it so you know, the food will never have any connection to the table. And so too, the same things we just said, you do the same thing with a, with a countertop. Coming to the stove, a stove top. A stove top is usually glazed, whether it's black or white, these fancy colors. These are usually made out of a porcelain which cannot be kashered. It's like a cheres, according to some Pesach. And therefore, we don't kasher it for Pesach. And therefore, we don't put stuff on there on Pesach. For those who don't have a separate Pesach kitchen or a separate Pesach, um, uh, Pesach uh, gas ranch, certainly this year, a lot of hardships, a lot of young light who were told not to go to their parents, who can't travel, never made Pesach before. And they're going to have to make use with whatever they have. They're going to have to follow strict halacha. You know, Lav Dafka will be able to do extra chumras. So they'll have to take that original gas range that they have and make Pesach with it. So how do you do that? So the grates means the pieces that come off. So the gas range has these grates. You see the grate? This is the grate where the pot goes on. So my Iker Adin... If you're going to clean the surface underneath very thoroughly, you're going to cook. And this is kosher. Let's say you bought a new grate 
or you cash it. So there'll be aim bli oilich mikeli yel keli below oitif. It's going to be from the gas wrench, from the surface, from the surface of the gas wrench to this. It's dry. There's no water here. Is aim bli oilich mikeli yel keli. No chametz will come out from here and go into this. And then from this will go into another keli, which is the pot, which is also usually dry from the outside. There's fire burning there. Yeah. So the mela, um, the gas wrench itself does not have to be really 100% kasher. It is glazed and it's cheres, and we can't kasher it. However, while we'll kasher the grades, that will get a certain level of kashering as well, as we're going to explain. So again, so the way, so we're going to kasher this. There's also this piece, as you see, this is, goes on the, the middle where the fire comes out, that we can't kasher. We don't want to play with fire there anyway. You don't want to make a gas explosion there. But that is going to be kashered from the fire itself that burns around, that comes out, if it be kasher. But that doesn't touch anything. That's lying right in the middle where the flame comes out. That doesn't touch any food. If anything, food will fall onto this on Pesach. Don't use it. So the, the way we're going to kasher this is um, you, you're going to take a 9 by 13 pan, this pan, we call it 9 by 13 at least in Muncie, whatever you call it in your place, and you cover the grate. You cover the grate like this. And I wouldn't do all four together at the same time because they become very hot. I would do one or two. And I put on the gas on the highest level, on that, under that grate. And I let it burn for 10 minutes, 10 to 12, maybe 15 minutes. You don't even need that long. Because the fire will be concentrated, sometimes you'll get even a tiny hole burned through here. Because it's going to be tiny, concentrated, so the heat will go all around and will cast it all around, which will become, yeah, uh, which will become Nitsutsu's Nitsne Will it become red hot? No. Because this is a very thick, very thick grate. And to, in order to become red hot, you need unbelievable amount of heat. It's not going to happen. But what I do it, I did it many, many times. I cash it after at night, shut all the lights, and I had a screwdriver ready. I shut the fire, and sec same second threw off the 9 by 30 with the screwdriver, and you'll be able to see the lights are off, and you'll be able to see it pink for not more than five seconds. And because the second the fire stops, it's such a thick, and right away, it's, gonna, it's not going to stay red for long. And it, it, it cools off right away. But you see it pinkish. And that's good enough. That's way more than a tzutzes nitzen. It doesn't need to be red hot. It needs to be in a tzutzes nitzen. So that's kosher. So again, so then you put on a, a, a 9 by 30 to cover it. You let the fire running for 10, 15 minutes. And it depends how thick it is. If, you know, so if it's thick, it's 15. If it's not so thick, you need less. And you burn it out. But the oven around it will be so hot from this concentration heat that a big chalik, one quarter of the of the, the stove top, I mean the stove top, will have a libun kal or some 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 kind of a libun will have there as well. So, but again, we're not going to use that stove top on Pesach. And Nisan Tamil of Gamma is not going to help. But the Evet, we're not going to say that everything falls there. It's kosher. So therefore, we're going to put silver foil, double layer of thicker silver foil that doesn't open underneath around uh, you know where you cook there's you could buy this disposable silver foil that's, that takes the spills in there so put the, that foil there and the rest cover with silver foil make a hole the flames should come out well it shouldn't choke and it shouldn't make any carbon monoxide it should have enough air and oxygen make sure the silver foil doesn't cover any place where fire comes out that's could be a dangerous thing over there don't put any silver foil but on the stove top itself, make sure it has silver foil. And if, if something fell down there, it's okay. It's double. It's fine even on Pesach. So that's how you kasher a stove top. You can't pour water. It's electronic today. You're going to pour water into there. You, uh, so the heat that you're going to apply for this will do some kind of a kashering for the rest of the oven. And it will be uh, covered anyway. The custom is that things we use anyway, we all year round and we touch with chametz and you know we cover anyway. So after you kasher this, some people would 
either putting foil is not practical. It's going to burn down. So 